Hi, my name is Lila and I am about to undergo breast augmentation. I'm Dr. Zoe Deal at Allure Medical Spa. Since I began working at Allure and doing breast augmentation surgery, I notice women are so excited to get their breast augmentation that they overlook their health and the, his the health of their breast. And I'm a real stickler about asking them if they've had a mammogram, if there's a history of breast cancer in the family. And a lot of women are so excited about getting the implant that they overlook it or don't necessarily tell me the truth about it. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. A little pinch here. And that's it. Look at that. The last time you ate or drink was? Um, drink was water at 7 a.m. Okay. And uh, food was at... Um... And I, I met Lila, and she's 24. And I walked in the room, and she had this big smile on her face. And she said, I'm Lila. I'm 24. My mother died of breast cancer, my grandmother died of breast cancer, and my aunt died of breast cancer. And while I don't know that I'm going to get breast cancer, I probably will. So while I have them, while I'm young, I'd like to have a breast augmentation. I know I need to be screened. I'm going to do it. I get a mammogram every six months. My mother was stage four before they even realized what was going on. So that's something I've always been scared of. But at the same time, why the hell would I let mean, old, scary breast cancer stand in the way of me getting the breasts that I've always wanted, the breasts that I feel like I deserve, the breasts that I, I just, I want these so badly, and I am not going to let cancer stand in the way of that. Okay, Sarita, I'm a CRN, I'm part of the anesthesia, I'll be the anesthesia person here today. Okay. What do you have done today? Breast augmentation. Augmentation, okay, and are you allergic to anything? No, ma'am. Anything to eat or drink today? Uh, a little water this morning around 7. Okay, did you take any medication or anything today? No. No. My first instinct was to say no. I don't think you should have the implants. But then I thought about it and realized that I'm probably doing breast augmentation on women that just don't tell me the truth. They're not as honest as Lila. And they have the same high risk of breast cancer that she does. And in reality, even without a family history, there's a risk of breast cancer. So this risk is there for every woman that comes in to see me. Lila was just being smart about it. She walked me through the process that, you know, we can go underneath the muscle so your mammograms will be easier. We can go through the armpit so that it will be easier for them to uh, distinguish between scar tissue. If you get a, an incision in um, any of the other locations, it's harder to distinguish between scar tissue and unhealthy breast tissue. So Dr. Deal was very aware of that immediately, that this is, she's, she was going to do all the things that she could to make this simple for me. Now there are several choices as far as where we make the incision, and we did discuss this with her also preoperatively. We can make the incision under the armpit, we can make the incision on the breast, or around the areola. And what did we decide? Transaxillary. Transaxillary. Now, for Lila, I think transaxillary is the perfect choice, and one of the reasons is whenever you make the periareolar or the under the breast incision, you do have to go through breast tissue. For the average person, that would be just fine, but for Layla, where mammograms are extremely important, I want to know the difference between normal breast tissue and scarred breast tissue. Scarred breast tissue can appear confusing on a mammogram. So definitely for Lila, the under the armpit or transaxillary approach is an excellent choice. Now we also have an option of going under the muscle or on top of the muscle. What did we choose? Under the muscle. Under the muscle. Again, another good choice for Lila because the implant being under the muscle will give her a nice layer of separation between her natural breast tissue and the implant. Another a little helpful thing for the radiologist when he's looking at her mammograms. I feel so fortunate that someone like Dr. Deal is ready with a plan that if it comes down to it, if it turns out that something is wrong with my breasts and I get cancer down the line, she is ready with a plan for me. So right now, I'm marking the very center of your chest. Okay. That way I know the implants are gonna sit evenly. And I'm gonna, I know you are, know what I'm about to say because I pointed this out to you in your consultation. Nice uneven chest area. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> I do point that out. Any, ev no girl is even, but right. if I see some... I have a uh, big old bone. It's not like it's just extra fat. Her left side, side of her chest, uh, her chest bone pokes out further 
than the right. So her implant will look a little pushed out further on this side just because her rib cage comes out further on this side. It's not uncommon to have something like that. That's good. I wanted to film my procedure so that other women could look at it and say, this is exactly what's going to happen. These are the people I'm going to meet. This is what I'm going to feel like. These are the concerns I'm going to have. These are, you know, it, I just wanted it to, to, to be known that this is really very simple, that these women here at Allure are going to make you feel comfortable. They're going to hold your hand through the whole thing. But hopefully watching a video like this will make you realize how, how simple, how easy, how fantastic this experience can be. So this is our whiteboard and it shows uh, what surgeries are happening and that way we know where everybody's at. So here is the pre-op Bay 2 breast augmentation, that would be me and then the nurse. And OR breast dog, me as the surgeon and our CRNA and Mindy and Crystal both circulating. So come on down this way. So here's our beautiful penthouse suite, the corner office, with a view of Shelby Township, Michigan. We're gonna be getting Lila comfortable on the bed, and then we'll be starting the surgery. And this is one of our other ORs, pretty much the same. Nice room, big size. It enables us to get around the patient as much as we need with all the equipment that we use in here. And then back here, we have our sterile prep area where we prep all of our equipment. This is our nurse's station. And as you can see, we have some people working back here. This is where we prep all the medications and the sedation for our patients. It's also where we keep a lot of the equipment and the breast implants, as you can see over down here. This is Lila Georgia. She is here today to have silicone breast implants, trans, trans axillary, and submuscular. She has no allergies. We have a pregnancy test that's negative. Her implants are silicone, 15-397. She has her SCDs on. Her antibiotic was given on time. Agree. Everybody agree? agree. Okay. You agree? I think so. So we use a PMX scrub and Lila is getting a little bit of a rash. We're thinking she's possibly got a reaction to the antibiotic that we gave. She doesn't have a history of any allergies, but uh, this is a new antibiotic and she doesn't, she's never taken really antibiotics other than doxycycline. So we're going to give her a little bit of Benadryl and a little bit of Solumedrol, which should counteract the rash.
and I woke up uh, however many hours or minutes later and um, Dr. Deal was standing right there and it, it was nice and easy. It was it was so easy. I, they warned me that you know you might be a little nauseous, you might not be too hungry. Thankfully it turned out I was I was starving as soon as I woke up. I was ready to go eat. I felt awesome. I don't have the elephant sitting on my chest just yet but there is a little tightness but okay. I, I just feel very relaxed, very yeah. you know Calm. very comfortable very excited to be able to take off the you know the the surgical bra and everything and okay just get going and I'm, I'm I'm so excited okay. I feel I feel great I all really do. I really do you got some water down yes you don't I feel sick to your down. stomach I'm actually a little hungry right now which I was surprised by Good. I thought that I was going to be you know bloated and not happy about anything okay but I'm, I'm hungry so. it was it was easier than I expected it to be I expected surgery to be a really uh, really scary experience I'm going in I'm gonna be so nervous and they're gonna pump me full of drugs and I'm gonna feel horrible afterwards and I'm gonna wake up and remember things, but it was great, it was great. <laughs> so her implants right now are really squished behind her muscle. Sure. So it's gonna take about a, a month, at least one month to six months for that muscle to relax and let those implants soften up and come forward. Most of them tend to ride pretty high until they can drop down, so that's what this strap is for. What I've done, it Velcros right here on the side and then it'll come on and off easily. She can leave this on tonight and then sleep propped up. Okay. All right, we don't want her laying flat because all that fluid that we put in there to numb her up is gonna wanna just rest back here. So she's gonna come in very swollen on either side. So I've already taken a listen to Lila's lungs to make sure that she has breath sounds on both sides. They sound great. I also took a look at the operative site and there's no bruising at all. So she's all set to go. I'm gonna call her tonight and then I will see her tomorrow. <gasps> Hi. Hi, how was your night? Good, very good. All right, now did you get sleep? Uh, yeah, more or less. You know, there was a lot of uh, waking up and going back to sleep, but I had, you know, I propped myself up a little bit, so I was at a kind of strange angle. Mm -hmm. um, and the pressure and the pain didn't bother me at all until I had to move to like, get up and go to the bathroom or something or mm -hmm. maybe drink some water but um, I would say like you know my Fitbit said that I got like six hours of sleep with waking up and that's actually you know, pretty good I'm, I'm perfectly happy for your first so. night usually the hardest part I think is sleeping on your back right. and elevated right. and for the first week at least I would definitely want you on your back I want you to get a shower today Wow. Sorry, it's burning really bad right there okay how bad. about this okay. side uh, nope no burning feeling. no burning okay just... the burning is from the nerve Re yeah, the nerve goes all the way down here, yeah, and it's bruised, and you're swollen right here. Right. That's where the fluid likes to go. Yes. That's why we I like to keep gurgles. you up. Yeah, mm -hmm. you'll feel snap, crackle, pop. Yes. Gurgly, bubbly, that is, up. yeah, air, and some people say squeaky, squeaky noises, and that's the implant with the fluid and the air in there kind of rubbing against your muscle. Okay. Normal. No all righty. Let's see what you can do with these arms as far as getting them up. And don't push it. Just kind of slow breath. How's it feel there? Slight pain, but slight not pain. Terrible. Okay. This side is still burning. Burning. Okay. okay. So this is pretty good okay. for day one. Now, what some girls will do is they'll feel the sticky strips on there, mm -hmm. and they're afraid they're going to actually tear something. So it they don't sense. feel pain. They just are afraid, and that's mm -hmm. not a good thing because you'll turn into the Tin Man. No, we don't want that. Don't want that. So okay. between now and your one week, I want you to kind of work on getting your arms up, 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 up. So when I put this between your chest, between your chest wall and your muscle, and initially it's squished beyond an inch of its life. Right. So you are that's flatter right. than what you're gonna be. Right. All right, and it's gonna go in the path of least resistance, which is up. So these implants right now are sitting like this. Right. And I have opened up this pocket down here where the palms of my hands are. So I'm putting a strap now on you up here to put pressure down here. Force it yeah. And this muscle, this hand is your muscle. Over the course of one month, sometimes up to six, it's going to relax. And fall into And the it's going to fall into the pocket. And not only that, it's going to cause your breast to come forward. Okay. And then it's going to be nice and soft. We're gonna go step by step. I'm gonna see you at one week and then I know you're gonna leave me. But at one week, we'll assess whether or not you, we, you need to wear that 24 seven. Okay. All right, but for right now, 24 seven, other than when you're in the shower. Okay, yeah. both the bra and the strap. Exactly. Okay. She's gonna come back at her one week and 
let us take her through that process too in front of the camera. She is one brave girl and I admire her and I think she's a wonderful role model for women out there. And that's what inspired me to do this. So we're gonna go ahead and take out these stitches. So I'll take your, yeah, there you go, arms out. And we'll have this arm up as much as you can. That's fine if that's all. And first I'll just take the steri strips off. Sometimes this off, is what really bothers people. That was the most annoying part, but the I wanted to leave strips. it on just yes. in case. Yes, <laughs> good. All right, now so the stitches are long. All I'm going to do is cut one of the tails, all right? Okay. So I'm not going to cut your skin. There. That way there's less of it to pull out. Okay. If in one week everything looks good, like it does right now, you can wear deodorant. Okay. All right. Bear with me. Pull out. Now I'm ready for it. So it's yeah, now you knew what was happening. Way. All righty. So we'll go ahead and take a look here. And they're beautiful. Perfect. I really didn't think they would come forward as quickly as they are. You were yeah. that tight. Go ahead and put your arm on. Okay, the little poke site here looks great. Here looks great. Okay. Don't hate me. Mm. I know. <laughs> okay. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is teach you some massage techniques. Okay. These implants can squish. You can move them around. Ooh. Right? That feels very, very weird. Yes. <laughs> All right. Same with this side. You're going to squish it and then move it. The more you do that, the less it hurts. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> with this one, there's one more technique that you need to do, and I want you to watch right here. This is where we released your muscle so that it, this implant can come down. down. Okay. All right? So what I'm going to do is put my hand here, okay. and I'm going to roll your breast up while I push the implant down. Okay. Now you see down here how you can that see the implant down. pushing? Yeah. Alrighty, I so want you to do up. that. So push like right here and then up Exactly. And down. Keep, yeah, just like that. Now I'm going to show you what would be a bad thing. Go ahead and do that same. And it doesn't move. Right. If okay. that happened, then you're kind of stuck. Yeah. Okay. All right, you need to let me know. Okay. All right, so, so as long feel. as you can see it bulging down here, okay. you know that it's got room to move. So I recommend 10 minutes in the morning of the massage, 10 minutes okay. in the evening. In the morning, when you get out of the shower, your muscles are nice and soft. It's the hot water right. relaxes you. So go ahead and do those massages and don't forget your arms. Okay. Start with a nice arm stretch, do your massage, end with a nice arm stretch. Okay. In the evening, when you, before you go to bed, if you want to put a little heating pad on to relax your muscles, you can do that. All right, this is an anti-cancer diet. Okay. Alrighty, so this is very important for you. So I just want you to read over that. Some of the, f the vegetables that are really good for an anti-cancer fighting diet. Okay. Arugula, uh, beet greens, bok choy, broccoli, cabbage, Brussels sprouts. Some of those really exotic ones, daikon, radish, Chinese cabbage. I'm not sure if I'd even recognize that in a grocery store, no, but you can but ask. Other yeah, ones there you go. <laughs> All right. So these in the green okay. column are very good. These ones are, you know, kind of in between, but the closer you get to the bottom, they're getting to be stay away. They're right. really not doing much for you. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Deal. Okay. I'm Dr. Zoe Deal at Allure Medical Spa. Lila shared her personal story of losing her mother to breast cancer and how important breast cancer screening is to her, even at the age of 24. However, 85% of breast cancers are diagnosed in women with no family history of the disease. The two most significant risk factors for developing breast cancer are being a woman and getting older. One in eight women in the United States will be diagnosed with breast cancer in the course of their lifetime. These numbers underscore the importance of proper breast cancer screening. When to get your first mammogram and how often to get them is a decision that should be made by your doctor. But the decision to see your doctor is a decision that needs to be made by you. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. At Allure Medical Spa, we will be donating $400 for each breast surgery that is done in the month of October to the American Cancer Society Making Strides Against Breast Cancer. Please continue to visit our website at www.alluremedicalspa.com for updates on Lila and also a link that you can go to to make a donation to Making Strides Against Breast Cancer. Together, we can make a difference.